objects and constructors in our previous videos we have seen basic concepts of programming let us move on to object oriented concepts java is a very powerful object oriented programming language hence everything in java is associated with classes and objects what is an object object is an entity that has state and behavior for example chair car etc what do you mean by state of an object state represents data or value of an object for example car object the state of car object is its color brand type etc so all the fields that represents data related to the object is known as state of an object what do you mean by behavior of an object behavior represents the functionality of an object in case of car object the behavior of the car could be drive reverse stop etc now how do you implement this in java to define an object first you need to define a class class is a blueprint or template through which objects are created you have a class you can create n number of objects of similar type we have already seen how to define an object what is an object object is an instance of a class the word object and instance are used interchangeably object has state and behavior how is state and behavior of an object defined in java so to implement state of an object in java we need to define instance variables and to implement behavior of an object in java we need to define methods let us define a class car to understand this in a better way so we have a class named car i want to define state of an object now the data related to car object could be the color of the car the brand of the car or type of the car etc so in java how do you define state of an object instance variables represent state or data of an object over here i have defined three instance variables that is color brand type data type is string string data type accepts text data and color brand type are the three instance variables i have also initialized the instance variables instance variable color has value red instance variable brand has value bmw and instance variable type has value sedan what are instance variables in our previous videos we have seen local variables variables local either to main method or user defined method instance variables are not local to any method these variables belongs to an object instance variables are the variables that define data related to the object or it defines state of an object how do you define behavior of an object methods are used to define functionality or behavior of an object so here i have defined methods drive and reverse drive and reverse represents functionality of a car object there is one more method display which is used to print the data of an object so this is my class car i have defined state of an object using instance variables i have defined behavior of an object using methods in our previous programs we have written main method in the same class here i am writing different class for the main method i have defined one more class class car demo and defined the main method inside car demo when you run a java application you will always run the class having main method because your class won't execute if there is no main method so inside the main method we have created an object of class car our class name is car demo and inside car demo we are creating object of another class that is car object so when the interpreter will read car c equal to new car it will allocate memory for object c inside the heap and the reference variable c will be created inside the stack so address of the object will be stored inside reference variable c and c will point towards the object residing on the heap instance variables belongs to every single object of the class so memory for instance variables of class car will be allocated to the object so this object c will have its own copy of the instance variables color brand and type we have initialized color to value red 
we have initialized brand to value BMW and we have initialized variable type to value sedan. So all these values will be assigned to the variables and it will be stored inside the object created. So when this first statement is executed, reference variable C is created inside the stack, object is created on the heap and memory for instance variables is allocated inside the object and values are assigned to these instance variables. Now what happens when we create one more object? car c1 equal to new car so reference variable c1 will be created on the stack and object will be created on the heap so address of object residing on the heap will be stored inside the reference variable c1 and this c1 will have its own copy of variables we are not passing any different values to the object c1 Hence, it will take the default values only. So, it will have its own copy of instance variables, color, brand and type and the default values will be assigned to it. Like this, if you create multiple object, every object will have its copy of instance variables. In the next statement, we are trying to print the value of color belonging to object C. So, this is my object C and this is the variable color belonging to object C which has value red. This red will be printed to the output screen. In the next statement we are trying to print value of instance variable brand belonging to object C. So this is my object C and this is the variable brand value BMW will be printed to the output screen. Now instead of invoking single instance variables each time, I have written a display method to print all the values. So the next statement is a call to display method c.display. The control will go to the display method. And code inside the display method will be executed. So we are just trying to print system.out.println. We are trying to print the values of the instance variables that is data related to the object. Which object? We have called display method on object C. Hence values related to object C will be invoked. Value of color that is red value of brand that is BMW and value of type that is sedan. So this will be printed to the output screen. The next statement is it is a call to drive method. If you check the signature of the drive method, the method is static. And when the method is static, you don't need to call it using an object. You can directly call it. But you need to tell the interpreter to which class this method belongs. Hence, we are writing car.drive because drive method belongs to class car. So from here, the control of the program will go to the drive method. The code inside the drive method will get executed. That is system.out.println and we are printing car is in drive mode. The next statement is again a method call car.reverse. Reverse is also a static method. You don't need to create an object. You can directly call it using class name. So from here the control of the program will go to the reverse method. And the code inside the reverse method will get executed. System.out.println car is in reverse mode. This will get printed to the output screen. Now what all things we have learned in this program? We have defined a class car. We have defined three instance variables. We have defined behavior of object car that is drive and reverse. And we have also defined display method which will print the data related to the object that is it will print 
the data assigned to the instance variables. We have created a different class car demo for writing the main method. We have created two objects. Every object will have its copy of instance variables. We have tried to invoke the instance variables. We have invoked display method. We have invoked drive and reverse methods. Now, if you look at the last statement, what am I doing? System.out.println and I am trying to print object C1. If I wanted to print the data related to the object, I have written a display method and I am calling the display method using an object and printing the data. But what if instead of writing and calling the display method, I want to print the object directly. What happens when you try to print the object directly? If you try to print the object, the output you get is some hash code. It will not print the data related to the object. Hash code is some code associated with the object when it is created. Now all this I will show you practically when I will write and execute the program. So if you try to print the object, it doesn't print the data associated with the object. It prints the hash code. If you want to print data associated with the object, you need to override toString method. What is toString method? If you want to print the object directly, you need to override toString method. toString method is a predefined method belonging to the object class. What is object class? Object class is an inbuilt parent class of all Java classes. Every class in Java is a child of object class, either directly or indirectly. Now this parent child method overriding, what is an object class? All these concepts we will be learning in inheritance. Inheritance is a separate topic in Java. For time being, try to understand if you want to print the object, you don't need to write user defined method just like we wrote display method. You can just override two string method in your class. So how do we do this? Signature for two string method is public string two string and you need to follow exact signature. So I have a class car. I have defined three instance variables, color, brand, type, which represents object data. There is a method drive. There is a method reverse. And instead of writing display method, I have overridden two string method. Public string two string. This signature should be followed as it is. So I have overridden two string method. Object class is the predefined parent class of all Java classes and this object class contains the method toString. What are we doing? We are keeping the method signature same that is public string toString but we are writing our own code. So inside the toString method I have written my own implementation. I am returning the data assigned to the instance variables of my class. This concept same method signature but different implementation of the code is called as method overriding. Now there will be a separate video on method overriding. Here we need to understand when you try to print the object, it automatically invokes two string method and hence we need to implement two string method in our class. So I have created a class car demo to write the main method and inside the main method I have created an object whose reference variable is C. So as soon as interpreter will read car C equal to new car, a new object is created inside the memory and this object C will have its copy of instance variables and values will be assigned to it. Now the important point about toString method. When you print the object system.out.println and you are printing object C, the control of the program will automatically go to the toString method. You don't need to call the method explicitly the way you call any other method in Java. In our previous example, we had given a call to display method explicitly. But nowhere we have given a call to toString method. Why? Because toString method is implicitly called. It is called automatically. When is it called? When you try to print the object. So as soon as the interpreter will read system.out.println and you are printing object C, the control of the program will go to the toString method and it will return the values belonging to variables 
color brand type and the data will get printed 